Good evening, we're back. This is Monica Zukas. This is Reality Check. And tonight I'm not trying to push any buttons and I'm not trying to be controversial or take that envelope just as close to the edge as I can without knocking it off. I have with me Larry Morris. He's an NRA certified pistol, rifle, shotgun. He, he's the guy, okay? I went, through the, I went through the chain and I got to the top and I'm very proud I did. I got to spend some time with him today. And, uh, you know, the NRA just came out with a statement today. I have uh, Andy Shelby. He's the principal at Hel uh, Heron Elementary. And it's all about the children. We've had a horrible tragedy in Connecticut where 20 of our children were murdered at close range by an assault rifle, by a mentally ill, I guess he's considered an adult. Sometimes I still consider 20-year-olds to be a child. But if there was a cut-and-dry answer... We'd have it, then we'd have everything solved, but there's not. And we started talking to uh, Mr. Shelby just right before the break about, you know, different things they have implemented in the school, different safety features they have. And one of the stories that's emerging from the Sandy Hook tragedy is a young teacher, I believe, was 26 or 27, named Miss Soto. And she got all the children in her class corralled into a closet, locked them or stored them away in the closet. And when the shooter came in there, she said, they're not here. They're on the other side of the building, and then she was killed. I mean, I just, is that instinct? Is that something you were trained to do? What, what, what if anything, as teachers, our teachers wear so many hats. I mean, Monday through Friday from basically 7.30 or 8 o'clock to about 3 or 4 in the afternoon, they are their providers. They are their teachers. They are protectors. There's so many things to our children. They have enough on their plate already. Is there training? For if there's a crisis, what do you do? Or do you think with her that was instinct? But just like, you know, every year my sons and daughter, their teachers, they just fall in love with them. You know, they're like, we love these children like they are ours. We spend so much time with them. And this 27-year-old girl gave her life for these babies, you know? I mean, what, what do you chalk that up to? Is that something you feel like most of your teachers would do for their children? Absolutely. I mean... <laughs> First of all, I mean, all these stories that are coming out, I can't imagine any other teacher acting in a different way. I mean, these are our, our children. Right. So every one of them that comes through your door every day, um, they're yours. So I, I can't imagine um, what went through their minds, you know, the, the things that, that they had experienced during that time. So, I mean, what we try to do is, is make sure that, Eventually, after, you know, Monday morning when I met with my teachers, it's to assure safety and security. And, and they knew immediately when those children came through the door that they'd be looking for safety and security in, in the eyes of teachers. So we went through procedures, but, you know, that's something we do every month. But it's sad we have to do so. It is. It is very sad, but... we got to roll with the times, though. I mean, you know, just like... Uh, one of my grandmothers has recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and my mom, it's my mother's mother, and she said, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready to deal with this. This is traumatic. This is upsetting. And I said, none of this is on our time. You just got to roll with whatever's going on. And unfortunately, we live in a time where, whether it's mental illness or whatever the root cause of this all is, we got to go with the flow. Yeah. So with your teachers, how that day... Andy, did your teacher start finding out about this incident? And what was the vibe at your school? What was the conversation amongst the adults, amongst the administration and teachers at your school that day? Automatically, resiliency. Uh, that's all I can say about my, my teachers. Heron Elementary, they, they basically um, absorbed whatever was coming from the outside world and adapted to what was coming into their interior. And um, I, I can't be prouder of what they did because they were the, the rock, this, the... the uh, the epitome of what you want a human being to be at that time. It's somebody that was solid and absolutely just, it was, to me, it was just, uh, it, was, it was amazing to watch. And I, all I had to do was set it in motion, tell them what happened, what occurred, and, um, and watch them go to work. And, and from there, the teachers, they knew what to do. Most of them mothers, family members, aunts and uncles. And it, it just... From the, from the core rocked everybody that was there, but at the same time, we, we experienced it together. And, and I think for the most part, um, the kids understood. And they were probably the most adaptable ever. Everybody there, the kids were the most resilient. So I have to, I have to say that, that was, that's what uh, I think they, they were all about that moment. So that moment in time on, on that Friday into Monday, it was an incredible, 
incredible amount of just experience. And, and for me, just to watch, I learned more from the kids than teachers at that moment. A lot of the teachers say that. And as uh, Nicholas, student teacher this semester, he said, you know what? I came into the teaching world thinking I want junior high and high school for sure. My first interim was with them. He said, I have spent the last several months with these fourth graders, and it's hard for me to leave them. He said, they have taught me things I never knew I needed to learn. And I love this age group now. And my son actually literally was in tears last night. He said, Mom, Mr. Schaffner, I think tomorrow's the last yeah. time we'll see him. And I love him. He's nice. He's, he's great like Mr. Adkins. And I said, he must be a good man to make my son, you know, feel that way and cry. But one thing I wanted to say is that whenever there was the guy that broke in in Texas, the lady's husband had just died of cancer several yeah. months ago when she had a baby. And she said, there's nothing more dangerous than a mother protecting her baby. <laughs> There really isn't anything more dangerous no. than a bunch of mothers standing yeah. around the school. Because the day it happened, there was an eerie silence. And when I walked to the door, I saw this sign. And it just said, doors are currently <clears throat> locked. Knock or feel free to call. And I thought, ooh. It just cut me to the bone because I thought, that bastard yeah. that did this. For and my first was anger toward the kid. And then I thought, you know what? He wasn't in his right mind. Something else was going on with him that made him do this. Because, of course, nobody could look at babies like that. Little bitty five- and six-year-old. And one thing that really got me today and almost brought me to tears when I was at the gun rage with Larry was uh, we had an AR-15. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's the type of gun that this young man <laughs> used to yeah. carry out this act. And I looked at it, and I said, Larry... Because in my mind, because the way the media spins things and just make assault rifles, assault rifles, I thought it was a, quote, in my terms, because I'm dumb to guns, I thought it was a, quote, machine gun. And I thought he walked in and pulled the trigger, and it was just spraying bullets left and right. And the particular gun this young man used, he had to specifically, boom, 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 pull the trigger each time. And I thought... And reload. I can't. I, I can't even... That made it so much worse to me. Anybody getting their life taken is horrible. When Columbine happened, it rocked my world. I wasn't a mother then. Now that I'm a mother with a child at the elementary school, while I'm watching on TV what just happened at an elementary school, and then knowing that he specifically had to look at those babies' faces and do that, to me, that's not a gun issue. That is a... You are mentally, you are so mentally ill and whacked out issue. Why are you mad at the NRA for mental problems? Why, why are you guys so easily, t why do I want to blame it on you? Because I don't want to blame it on you. I want to blame it on this guy either being not treated properly or over-medicated. And to me, over-medicated, I could do 20 shows on because I've seen that. I've been there, done that. And, you know, our industry with the pharma is... Hey, all the drug reps are in the offices every day of these doctors. We're right. catering you in lunch. <clears throat> I'm going to buy you this and buy you that. You know, I want to quit smoking. Take Chantix. I may have demonic thoughts. I may have <laughs> erectile dysfunction from it. My ears may fall off and I may go blind. But by God, I'm not going to put a cigarette in my mouth. Monica, let me comment on that. I really don't think you'll have erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I don't think that'll be one of the symptoms. <laughs> you talk, the, guns, the guns are an easy target. It's the tool the guy used to do this dastardly deed. It's more difficult when you talk about social change, when you talk about bad parenting, when you talk about things you've already mentioned here, medicating kids that may or may not need the medication, uh, the lack of disciplines in schools, and frankly, I don't think it's the fault of the teachers. I think this is school boards and other people get involved in making those decisions. When I was a, a, a youngster a few years ago... Uh, Just a couple. They, yeah. Uh, they'd take a, actually a paddle, you know, a piece of wood, and if you got out of line, they'd bench you over give you a couple of swaths with it. Well, the teachers can't do that anymore, so they don't get much respect from the children. But a little, a little respect, uh, respect actually starts at home, and I'll carry over into, this, into the schoolroom. And again, I'm not an expert on that. I'll leave that with Andy, but I, that's a part of the problem. But the gun is an easy, let's just ban them all. That's an easy target, and it's an easy solution. But the solutions to this are multifaceted. There are several that we need to be looking at here. What is America's fascination with guns? Because, boy, are they. Look, it's... Are we, I should say. I'm, I'm the oldest guy in the room right now. And I'll just tell you a personal experience here. When I was about, well, it would have been the late 50s. I was probably 14 or so. My dad took me to Sears and Roebuck store over in Harrisburg, Illinois. There was a big wooden barrel there full of Argentine Mausers. 
Uh, that's a bolt-action rifle that was used in 18, late 1800s in Argentina. And we bought that gun for about $15. There was no <laughs> background check. There was no nothing. It was common for kids to come to high school with a shotgun or a rifle in the vehicle, in the truck, and then after school you went home and you went rabbit hunting or squirrel hunting or whatever the season was at that time. When you said l later, earlier, that that times have changed, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely. And we as adults have to adapt to those changes. There's a lot of things happened over my lifetime that I'm aghast at. You know, some of the music my kids wanted to listen to and things like that, uh, I just I just couldn't believe it. My, if my kids were here, they'd tell you some of the things that they'd say, hey, Dad, you know, you're too old. Yeah, it's, you don't get it. It's, it's right. Great. You don't understand what's going on here. Well, I, th I think I do understand maybe a little better than I perhaps did uh, when I was a kid. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's just a different world, and we've got to have better solutions for these school sh And just mass shootings, not just school shootings, but you see this happening in theaters, and you see it happening in, in uh, shopping malls. Typically, I'll tell you another underlying thread here, aside from the, the uh, competency of the individual doing the shooting, right. uh, is the fact that these are all gun-free zones. You know, years ago, 19, I think it was 99, I may be wrong on the date here, the federal government says gun-free school zones. Can't have a gun on the school property inside yeah. the school, can't have so it in the thousand So this makes people right. crazy. People say, hey, I'm going to go there. Absolutely. Nobody's going to shoot no me. There's no resistance. Let me tell you what these, I just went to a seminar. I was telling Andy this a while ago. About a month ago, I went to a seminar that about a quarter of which was called Bulletproofing the Mind, and about a quarter of which was devoted... Bulletproofing the Mind. That's it. ...was devoted to school shootings and mall shootings and things like that. This guy has uh, a wealth of experience in, in training people and, and about this subject. is called Lieutenant Colonel, retired Lieutenant Colonel, Army Colonel named Grossman. And he said the things, the one thing that they found out these people fear is failure... So they pick the easy target. If Absolutely. you've got something on your building yeah, that says right. this is no guns in this room, and a lot of times they say the bullet is the equalizer. I'll give you one more example here: the Aurora Theater shooting out in Colorado just recently. You remember that? Yes. I understand there were five theaters within w almost walking distance of this shooter. He picked the one theater that had the no guns allowed sign on the front of the theater. The other four theaters did not have those. Now, what do you, as an adult? logically thinking and fur from that information. Absolutely. When you know. We have to take another quick break, and I know Andy's got a comment about that. When we come back, I want to talk about why do ordinary citizens need assault weapons? Does the NRA believe that everybody should have access to assault weapons? Because that's one of the big myths that makes a lot of people angry with, quote, and gear a lot of their anger toward the NRA. We have to take a quick break. I'm Monica Zukas. This is Reality Check. We're talking about the tragedy at Sandy Hook. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.